is anyone else out there? Do aliens exist? We have no direct evidence that they do. And that is despite the fact that literally every day there are multiple UFO sightings. There have been many tens of thousands of them. The vast, vast majority can be easily explained though. The claimed UFOs are actually meteors, planets, airplanes, various kinds of balloons, or these lenticular clouds. However, even the Pentagon now admits that there are cases which did for sure happen, yet we can't explain them very well. But after all, UFO stands for unidentified flying object. Even UFOs that we can't explain that well probably weren't visits by an extraterrestrial civilization. Besides searching the skies for flying saucers, people are trying to prove we aren't alone by more sophisticated methods too, like receiving and analyzing radio signals from deep space. Scientists have been doing that for more than 60 years now, using radio telescopes around the world. So far, we haven't picked up any message from aliens. But we not only listen, we also send information about us out there. Mostly in the form of radio messages, but also as physical time capsules attached to space probes. Like the golden record on board both the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 probes. Both of the Voyagers have already left the boundary of our solar system and are headed towards other stars. And the two records they carry, which may be found by someone in the very distant future, contain images, music and sounds representing our nature, us and our culture. They also include recordings of greetings in many languages such as these. Paz y felicidad a todos. Herzliche Grüße an alle. Dharti ke baasiyon ki or se namaskar. Hello from the children of planet Earth. For many decades now, we've been actively looking for aliens and we've been sending them messages with probes We've taken a close look at all the planets in our solar system, a few of their moons, as well as Pluto and some other astronomical bodies. With telescopes, we've discovered thousands of planets outside our solar system. And yet, we still haven't found any aliens. Doesn't it mean they don't exist? Not really, because the universe is kind of big. Our planet is one of eight planets in the solar system. Our entire solar system is one of hundreds of billions planetary systems in our galaxy. Our entire galaxy, the Milky Way, is one of about 2 trillion galaxies in the observable universe. Let's pessimistically suppose that the average galaxy only has 100 million stars, the same amount of planets, and that there are 2 trillion galaxies. Then, the total number of planets is 2 times 10 to the 20th. That's 200 quintillion planets. That's 2 million 
followed by 14 more zeros. The probability that out of all these planets, ours is the only one with intelligent life is practically equal to zero. And we're still ignoring the moons of all these planets. And rogue planets, planets without stars. And that is a mistake, because life can exist on such bodies as well. What's more, that number of all planets, 2 times 10 to the 20th, that only concerns the observable universe, the part of the universe we're able to see from Earth. The whole universe is actually much larger than that, and the real number of all planets is thus much bigger than even the 200 quintillion. However, some people would for sure argue that it doesn't matter how many planets there are because the Earth is just one of a kind. Or some could say that the Earth is the only chosen one or that a higher power decided that only our planet will get the gift of life. The problem with these theories of our uniqueness is that whenever we thought we were that special, we always turned out to be just totally wrong. First, we thought our planet was the center of everything. Then we found out it wasn't, and so, for a long time, we assumed the center of everything was our sun. We later found out that our night sky is full of stars just like the sun. But we still thought that our star was really unique in that it had planets revolving around it. Today we know that to be false too. In fact, a great majority of stars has planets. We also used to think that beyond the edge of our galaxy there was nothing. But today, we know that there are trillions of other galaxies there. The point is that the idea of our planet being the only one with intelligent life, even though there are hundreds of quintillions, perhaps even sextillions of planets, well, this idea is just irrational. In reality, life may be pretty common in the universe. Why? It's what the history of our own planet suggests. Because life began here really soon after the Earth had formed. Planet Earth is 4.54 billion years old. And life has been here for at least 4.28 billion years. And back then, when life was arising here, our planet was not a pleasant place. Carbon dioxide made up a big part of our atmosphere, whereas there was basically no oxygen. Moreover, huge asteroid impacts were frequent. The fact that life formed under these conditions that early in Earth's history indicates life may not be that super rare in the universe. Another thing that hints at this is water. Water is where life began all those billions of years ago. And today, water is still the most essential building block of all life on Earth. After all, every cell of every living organism is 70% water. And there is a lot of water liquid water in the universe. Our solar system is no exception. But wait, there's not that much water. Most of the liquid water in our solar system is of course in Earth's oceans, right? No, that's wrong. In fact, compared to the amount of all the liquid water on Earth, the solar system as a whole contains at least 25 times more water. This is a small moon of Jupiter, Europa. It is four times smaller than the Earth. And yet, under its icy surface, 
It hides a deep water ocean, which contains more than twice as much water as all of our planet. This is Jupiter's largest satellite, Ganymede, and it has a water ocean too, and so probably does yet another moon of Jupiter, Callisto. But of course, it's not just Jupiter's natural satellites. This is Triton, a moon of the distant Neptune, and this is the even more distant Pluto. They both might be hiding oceans. In addition, this small moon of Saturn, Enceladus, is almost certainly an ocean world as well. By the way, scientists take the possibility of life existing in these oceans really seriously. An example of this is the story of the Cassini spacecraft. In 2017, this expensive probe full of top-notch technology was directed right into Saturn. And naturally, it burned there. This was done on purpose to prevent it from falling onto one of the planet's moons. Because if it had, and if we later found life on that moon, it would have possibly been life we brought there ourselves years prior. Anyway, besides the little Enceladus, Saturn's biggest moon, Titan, is interesting too. It has a thick atmosphere, protecting it from radiation. The wind blows there, it's got clouds from which it rains, and as a result it also has seas, lakes and rivers. Unfortunately, that's not water flowing there. It is liquid methane and ethane. Yet, Titan actually does have plenty of water too, but it is again in an ocean below its surface. What about oceans on the surface though? Well, in our solar system, there's only one. It's this one. But it wasn't always like this. A long time ago, both Mars and Venus were probably blue planets. These two neighbors of ours are now hostile, toxic, dry places. But there was a time when their atmospheres were more like ours, and they had a lot of water on the surface. Water is thus quite common, not only in the solar system, but in the universe in general. Of course, just because there's water somewhere doesn't mean aliens are there too. Along with H2O, the evolution of life also requires energy and an appropriate chemical environment, which means, for instance, the presence of carbon, nitrogen or phosphorus. Even so, Europa seems to meet all of these conditions. And other mentioned moons might too. And so, it is quite possible that right now, at this very moment, extraterrestrial creatures are living, moving, eating, reproducing somewhere in our own solar system. Not intelligent humanoids, but extraterrestrial creatures nonetheless. And we're only talking about our own tiny solar system here. One of many quintillions of planetary systems. So, let's talk about the other systems. Can they contain places with conditions suitable for life too? They can. And they certainly do. And given how many there are, it's not only likely that many Earth-like places exist, but also that there are places out there even more suitable for life than our planet. 
and unlike with our solar system, here we aren't only talking about microscopic life or fish and octopuses anymore, but about advanced civilizations as well. Unfortunately, observing other planetary systems is hard, and we are quite new to it. Therefore, despite there being many quintillions of them, we only have information on a few thousand. But even some of those are intriguing. Like for example, the Kepler-90 system, which is fairly similar to ours. Its star belongs to the same category as our Sun. And it seems there are eight planets revolving around it, just like in our solar system. Also, like in our system, the planets closer to their star are smaller and rocky, while those further are bigger and gaseous. However, all the Kepler-90 planets are actually way too close to their star, rendering them too hot, and life on them unlikely. But the planets of the TRAPPIST-1 system are a different story. We know of seven, and the temperature might be okay on all of them. In addition, all seven planets are rocky and about as big as the Earth. And not one, but multiple of them may host water on the surface, and maybe even life. Planets like these, so those that are rocky, orbit their star at a suitable distance for surface water not to evaporate nor freeze, and also meet other criteria, like not being exposed to extreme radiation, well, such planets are called potentially habitable. Astronomers have found more than 40 such worlds in various corners of our galaxy. And yet, they have so far taken a look at about 0 0.000003% of all the planetary systems in our galaxy. In reality, there are billions of potentially habitable planets just in the Milky Way alone. Because of how fast life on Earth began, because of how many ocean worlds exist in our tiny solar system alone, because of there being billions of planets similar to Earth in the Milky Way, because of the Milky Way being just one of trillions of galaxies. Because of all this, we do have the answer to the question whether aliens exist. That answer is actually quite interesting, and it goes as follows. Yes.